Hey guys, what's up? Just trying to catch my breath here. <laughs> so Kiddow is in ABA today. Um, and then he's going to school after ABA. And I do not have parent training today. It is tomorrow that I have parent training. So today I decided to do some self care, get some fresh air, some exercise, and get my new video edited. right out here to see my phone screen. And I'm starting to get a headache from screening trying to see it. So I think I'm just gonna enjoy a little bit more fresh air and then probably take my editing back home like a boring person. <laughs> Okay, so real quick story time. I just went to the grocery store. I know I look quite scary. I actually smell quite scary too. You're welcome. Because I went for a little jog on the beach and it was super hot. So it's time to go pick up the boy. And then we're going straight back to the apartment so I can shower. But I wanted to share a very quick story with you guys. So y'all know that I'm an ER nurse and I had a patient yesterday. I could tell right off the bat that he was developmentally delayed, probably autistic, but wasn't 100% sure. He had a busted nose. So being a trauma nurse, I had to go evaluate his injury. And you see so much in the ER. I mean, the stories that I have, you wouldn't even believe the stuff that we witness on a daily basis. So, you know, you see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I've had enough incidences with children or adults, all people from group homes that are on the spectrum that are development, developmentally delayed. And it's enough that, you know, you see one or two kind of iffy, sketchy, not so ideal scenarios. And it's enough that it puts a bad taste in your mouth. So I just always, you know, as a parent of an autistic child, and especially a single parent, I constantly worry about his future. I constantly worry what's going to happen when I'm not here. Um, who's going to look after Kidel if something were to ever happen to me. Even long term, you know, when he's an adult and old and I'm dead and gone, you know, eventually I'm going to die. I'm not going to be here forever. Like those crazy thoughts run through your mind and you, you think about stuff like that. You think about, you know, what kind of care he'll get in a group home. Um, you know, will he be loved? Will he be treated right? Will he get, you know, all the stuff that he needs and deserves and is entitled to? Um, long story short, see, see where my, my brain, it just, I just go down that tunnel and I just, I go there. So I always think the worst and, and I've witnessed bad stuff. Um, anyways, so my mind went straight there and I was instantly like, you know, kind of thought the worst of this situation. And the young man came in with a caregiver. I just prejudged her and the situation and just automatically, ugh, you know, here comes another group home individual with somebody that doesn't care about him. And, you know, I wonder if what happened to his nose, you know, did they hit him or ugh, just crazy, crazy. I went there, I thought the worst. And then when I went to go speak to his caretaker, I was blown away. I mean, I prejudged her. I did. I prejudged her. And she was so caring. She was so intelligent. She was on her A game. She knew he was like 25, 26, something like that. She knew him like the back of her hand. She knew his behaviors. 
um, you know, she explained what happened. It was self-injury and she explained that it was her day off and she came in to take him to the hospital to get evaluated and how disappointed she was in the group home because, you know, she was the first one to admit that sometimes they're not, you know, paying attention or sometimes when the residents are starting to escalate, they don't pay attention to those signs and then it, stuff like this ends up happening from a meltdown you know these self-injury behaviors and we just had the longest conversation she walked down with me to cat scan with the patient and me and her were talking in depth and I was just number one I felt like a jerk because I judged her before I even talked to her and then I was so relieved that there's hope for the future there's hope for better care for you know group home individuals or you know lower functioning individuals and it just gave me so much hope that she really cared she was smart very intelligent we were just talking about kind of anything and everything surrounding group homes and I was so impressed with her and I could tell she really loved her residents and she really took good care of them so um, anyways I'm starting to ramble but I just wanted to share that with you guys and I will be the first one to say that I made a mistake by judging her because she was amazing and I was very impressed. Okay, buddy. Fidel is digging into the groceries. Ah! What's up? Chip, chip. Yeah, you can have chip, chip. Put your shoes on, buddy. Hey, you know what I think? I think that you should help mommy with the groceries today. Come here, baby. Here, you hold this like a big boy. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, now it's 10 steps ahead of me as usual. <laughs> but at least he's helping with the groceries today. Can't complain about that. What a big boy. All right, baby. Ready to go inside? What a big boy you are. Here. Mm. <laughs> you hear that loud car? There we go. All right, air condition. How was your day at school? Did you enjoy it? So Kido had a fairly good day at school. Um, his therapist goes with him in the classroom because he's still a one-on-one -on -one support kid. And she said he did okay, um, but he had a lot of chins. Which for Kido, his chinning behavior is typically a precursor for an escalation of behaviors. That's kind of what I was saying earlier. Um, with that, with that, lady from the group home, she was telling me, you know, that she tries to educate her staff on precursor behaviors because typically you can, uh, typically you can de-escalate a situation if you know what those signs are. And for Kadel, it's chinning. So he just pushes his face really hard and then usually that's followed by, you know, a bigger behavior. So not that he, anything bad happened at school today but just lots of chinning which is kind of like a sign that you know he just wasn't in his happy place or he was you know for whatever reason just kind of antsy and not feeling it today so he didn't do bad he just showed some concerning signs that he wouldn't have done too great if he would have stayed longer so the thing for Cadell is we're trying to expand his time in the classroom and we're trying to work towards him being a you know regular classroom kid going for the majority of the day not just little bits and pieces which is what he's doing now so anywho I'm gonna take a shower because I stink Kiddo's gonna swing on a swing and we'll catch up with y'all later fun swing around your apartment swing you find your blue phone goofball Okay, so now I am just cooking dinner because we have a surprise visit from Junk. <laughs> John is training for his new job and it's his first week so he's tired 
and I'm cooking dinner because it's my day off. Kiddo's playing on the swing in there still. You ready for dinner, Boba? It's almost ready. Huh? What? <coughs> Goofball. I think Kiddo is a little bit hungry because he's been asking for food ever since he got home from school. I got so much sun today at the beach. It's crazy. I didn't even realize. There was such a nice breeze that I didn't even realize I was getting so much sun. But yeah, dinner's almost ready and we're gonna have a family dinner together. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to clarify and sum up the story that I was trying to tell you guys earlier about the patient from the group home. I'm not really sure if I got the point across that I was trying to, but basically I've taken care of tons of patients from group homes in the emergency room setting. And it seems like I've came across so many situations to where the patient comes in and they have a caregiver that is could care less, you know. They just, it's just a job to them. It's just a check to them. They're constantly asking if they can leave or, you know, don't know anything about the patient at all. And it's just disappointing. It's really disappointing, especially as a parent of a developmentally delayed person. It's discouraging, you know, to see those situations. And I just automatically assumed that when I saw this patient situations like that happen it just makes me a combination of sad and angry and I feel like I need to advocate and I feel like I need to do something about those situations but I don't know what to do so it just makes me more sad and angry and I automatically went there and I was so pleasantly surprised that this was not the case at all and then I felt like a jerk because I just assumed it so it was a good day, it was a good experience, and I was so happy that the autism community has a person like that within the group home setting that is doing everything right for those adults, and she is their advocate. I don't need to be because she is. So it was a really, really great experience. <laughs>